I came back from Barcelona. And my wife, he helped me put it all together. And in November of uh, 2001, I think it was, um, I received uh, the Queen's um, medal. Uh, she was, uh, yeah, 2002. Was that diamond medal? Or yeah, she was 50, 50 or 60 years in, in the, on the throne, right? And so, and there, uh, this is what uh, uh, the article says. Sydney resident to be honored today with medal presentation. Paul Young of Sydney is one of 20 Nova Scotians to be honored today at Government House in Halifax with the Queen Elizabeth II Golden Jubilee Commemorative Medal. The presentation will be made by Lieutenant Governor Myra Freeman. Young was nominated for the award by Alexa McDonough, leader of Canada's New Democratic Party. And I quote, This is my opportunity to recognize Paul Young for the work that he has done on behalf of the disabled community. He has spent over two decades of his life promoting equality and inclusion here in Canada and international settings. Then I I get out of people first. I have a, I'm past president now, and then I'm past 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 whatever. Anyway, some stuff was going on, which I won't get into, and I just said I have no more to do with it. So I get an email from the Canadian Association of Community Living, asking me to come to Toronto or wherever it was and receive the medal for the. Jubilee, which is the 60s, isn't it? Uh, and I turned it down. I didn't go. Uh, but I had the local MIA presented to me uh, in his office uh, a few weeks later. Now, in People First, I learned that institutions were bad. The reason People First was formed in the approximately 1973 was that they wanted to get out of institutions. They had, in, in somewhere in BC, they had taken them out for a day, a day uh, outing or something, and they all said, we want out, and people were started to grow from that concept. And uh, my brother Tony was in an institution for a lot of years. And this is Tony, by the way, and my uh, second youngest brother, and um, I learned that institutions were bad. I didn't realize until then how that Tony shouldn't be in there. And so he was in Waterville in the Atlas Valley in Nova Scotia, and he was there for 43 years. Uh, some 40 years, but total in the, the Cape Breton uh, Mental Institution and the other thing that formed after that in like, like this one. In Sydney, a total of 43 years, he was in an institution. Next. There is, uh, in 2009 or so, uh, that his picture taken at Walmart, and uh, he came home to live in a group home in the Waterford in 2001. Uh, one of the first outings, they do outings. And one of the first outings they did was take him to a grocery store at, at uh, what would he be then, 62, whatever. He was born in the 60s or whatever that was, 2003 or so. He went to a grocery store for the first time in his life. And uh, there he is. Can you just look at the difference? Yeah. Can you see the difference? Yes. Right. I'm not saying you do, but... If you think institutions are, uh, are grand, they're not. It's a point on society that has not been dealt with. Next. There he is there. Um, I won't go into, uh, well, my brother Raymond and my wife Marilyn are there. And, uh, well, I'm not new anymore. She's 13 years, my friend. Uh, Mrs. Kirby, not a Kirby. And we're at a Christmas luncheon at Tony's home. And it is Tony's home. So another year we go for his birthday. And he's in a chair. And they talk about getting a new chair, an affordable chair, so it folds up so that maybe Raymond and I and Mel can take Tony out ourselves. 
And I told my friend Nina about it, and this is great. So we go to the whatever the function was, and uh, her being like my mother, would uh, talk about what's going on to the staff. And she said, isn't it grand, the new wheelchair is coming, and when will it be coming? And nothing more than that, and it would be really good for Paul and Marilyn to be able to use a chair that, that's friendly or easy to use, blah, blah, blah. We left. That was, I think, Saturday or Friday, whatever day it was. Monday morning, phone rings. Pick up the phone. Nobody even says who they are. Who's that woman? What is she doing there? What is she asking so many questions about? I said, well, wait a minute. Well, the woman was with you on the weekend. Who's that woman? And what right does she have to ask questions? And this is the uh, team leader of the house. So instead of me calming down and, uh, and explaining who, well, I did try to say, well, she's one of my dear friends, and she loves Tony, and she wanted to come and see. Well, why is she asking? Well, I said, probably make conversation. I think she's interested in uh, when the new chair is coming. Well, we don't know when it's coming. And, I, and she shouldn't have been asking any question. So I can't bring her to the, to the uh, home? And she didn't answer that. And I said, well, you know, uh, I want to bring Tony. She wants to come and see Tony. She likes Tony. And she said something else about it. She liked phone down. Then, uh, this year, we have a IPP. You know what they are, right? It's a glorified way of showing what they're spending the money on the government. They, all these, all the clients have met in the group homes and said, I'm going to my IPP. It has nothing to do with them at all. It has to do with where the money is going and how well are they spending the money for the government. As, whether they develop or not, don't mean a thing. One of the reports, quarter reports I get from Tony is how they describe his inclusion. They take them out for their outings and take them to Tim Hortons. So me being who I am one day, I asked one of the workers when I went to visit Tony. Uh, uh, I told him to go to Tim Hortons, yeah. He always likes hot chocolate. I said, and, and who does he know there? No. They take him into hot chocolate, the minute he's finished, out the door. They don't say, go oh, Joe, which in the water is not a big place. This is Tony. No one. The neighbors on the street, they're, they're at the end of the street, the dead end street, they're at the end of the street, the house across the street, two houses here. Has any of those neighbors been in their, that uh, group home? No. Because the word, you know why? Confidentiality. But yet, at the AGM, you go to their AGM, and they talk about Tony's home, and Fred's home, and Blow Joe's home. Not their home at all. They have no say on what is going on. I'll leave it there. Some more bragging about me, by the way. Rights of intellectual disability recognized. Pioneering declaration sets world standards for ensuring people receive equal treatment. Because of a developmental disability, Paul Young was warned he'd never work as anything but a dishwasher. Yesterday, the Nova Scotia business person and former CBC radio technician proudly signed his name to the Montreal Declaration, which recognizes the fundamental rights of the intellectually disabled. Uh, that's because of my uh, work at People First, mainly, and one of, the mem one of my advisors were, was a member of the health, World Health Organization, and that's how I got there. Yeah. Now, you might recognize one person here, maybe two, actually, two persons. You might even recognize Tracy. Recognize Tracy? Tracy. <laughs> How? <laughs> uh, I don't know how many years ago, it must have been 99, 2000, whatever it was, I don't remember. I was at a function here in PEI, I think it was a People First thing. I think, matter of fact, I think it was the forming of Prince Edward Island, People First. And I met this beautiful person. 
and her and another lady, Joe McDonald. And for some reason or other, I had to tell some of my story at the People First meeting. And they decided that maybe I could come and speak to your class. Went to class, and I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> Uh, I just, because I started it here, um, uh, I got doing it in, uh, this is in Steubenville, at the College of the North Atlantic, next. I did it in Belleville at Wireless College last year, there's the instructor there. The most good thing, and this is a bit chauvinist and I totally apologize, I get to work with smart, good-looking women. <laughs> Um, one of the women that I went, I took the slide down, but one of the women in uh, Yarmouth at the Birds campus of the Old Social Community College and the gentleman in the picture with the goatee, Tom um, Gunt, uh, nominated me for this. Go. Paul receives honorary diploma from Nova Scotia Community College. The honorary diploma is the highest recognition Nova Scotia Community College is able to bestow, and it is given to worthy leaders that through their own innovation and commitment contribute to the quality of life in Nova Scotia, and in essence exemplify the values of Nova Scotia Community College. So they had a reception, and this took place in uh, Port Huxbury near the Causeway. Now, you notice that uh, they didn't have me uh, get that award in Sydney at the Marconi campus. They had me get this award where uh, Tom taught in Roxbury. And the people are there are not there because uh, they need to fix my problem with cerebral palsy or being retired or whatever. They're there because of my talents. Bruce Lee, who spoke uh, through the presentation, will speak again. And um, my uh, minister and his wife, and the ex assistant minister, and of course my teacher, Walter, and the rest of them, uh, my, where's my sister in law, my brothers, my nephews, there she is, my nephew's uh, mother, were all there, and my wife, Marilyn, to see me receive this uh, diploma. And so, you know. They call it Paul's community a bit of a stretch, I know, but uh, the point is they came there because uh, of what I have accomplished in my, in my talent, not that I had um, uh, retiredness or zero policy or I was going to fall down or die or whatever. Next. We, in, when I was in the workshop, there was a couple of kinsmen that were committee chairs. One was the guy that introduced me to Walter at CPC. Another guy was, his name is Fabian, and I'm hanging out with my friend Nina and uh, getting pretty sick of being involved with, uh, quite frankly, the people first stuff and, well, 10 years ago. And she said, you know, you do an awful lot of stuff with people with disabilities. How come you don't do something with other people? You know, and she had met uh, my uh, former committee chair uh, of the workshop, Fabian. And Fabian had heard about what I was doing, and CBC had did a documentary on how I got to CBC. And he remembered me from the workshop, and she suggested that we go make a presentation um, a lot shorter than this at the course, and then. After that, she started, and he started saying that I should join the Kiwanis. And he sponsored me to be a member of Kiwanis uh, nine years ago. And he, one thing that frustrates my uh, friend John is that she meets him uh, on the street or in the Soviets or in a hospital or wherever, and all he could talk about was when I was at the workshop and how well I did there. And she gets annoyed with that because she knows and I, I could do a lot more than what was being done at the workshop. Basically, in other words, uh, the label is still with me. I did a brief presentation in Montreal, I forgot to say that, when they got the, um, the Montreal Declaration signed. 
woman, I mean, a person a woman comes over from, from another country that was a service provider and comes over and says, great presentation, she's crying, it's wonderful. But you know, Paul, you were not, you don't, you were misdiagnosed. You don't have a disability. And for a split second, I thought she was complimenting and then I realized, no, no, she runs an agency and she's needed and that can't happen to the folks that I look after. Somebody made a mistake with you. Anyway, and there I led the, oh, uh, we have a bingo. Uh, that was fundraising for uh, TV bingo for the Qantas. We, uh, and this is the Qantas Golden K, which is the people that are retired, not in business, but retired now. So uh, I do the uh, TV switch, and I go from the bingo numbers to the color to the bingo numbers, and then put in the uh, intro and extra meaning, good evening, this is TV bingo, and good night, TV bingo. I do all that, and that's the kind of work I did at CBC. Next. We're almost done. We're almost done. In our African language, we say a person is a person through other persons. I would not have known how to be a human at all, except I learned this from other human beings. We are made through a delicate network of relationships of interdependence. We are meant to complement each other. All kinds of things go horribly wrong when we break that fundamental law of our being. Bishop Desmond Tutu. By the way, that I had been ended it down and I got my friend Bruce, who now is a car salesman in Park Hospital at Time Troy Back Toyota, actually he's the manager. And he read that. But it the whole thing is called I think it said a voodoo. It's probably what that that's probably what he's referring to. It's called Ubuntu. Uh, and uh, Desmond Tutu, I don't know where he gave that address out of anything, but that's just part of it. So being in the workshop and, and being able not to do very much and uh, repair uh, pop cases and, and uh, repair broken down furniture, and that uh, certainly doesn't say anything about learning how to do things. I mean, you know, uh, he, he says that, that, you know, you learn, basically, you learn from other human beings. So, my friends are there because they can't, I'm there because they can't, and they know they can't, and so we can't. Next. I started doing this public speaking in, uh, in uh, 98 before I got here. And anyway, around 2000, around 9-11, uh, 2001, I met, I had to go, my last days of people first as president, I had to go to a conference in Seattle, Washington. And, um, and uh, I, uh, I met this, uh, I did a presentation. This gentleman, six months later, calls me, wanting to know whether I could, uh, or four months later, one, could, could I do the same presentation in Chicago? And it was around the time of um, the 9-11. And he worked for a law agency supporting a, uh, group home agencies. And in the States, if uh, the client that was putting in the group home fell down, well, the mother and the father, whoever, went through the agency. He wanted me to talk about the right to risk. And that when you live uh, uh, inclusion and when you live uh, a so-called normal life, you take risks. You take risks going across the street, whatever. Okay. So I used that whole thing about 9/11 uh, when I spoke in Chicago, and then a couple of months later, in uh, late August or late July, I think it was, uh, he called me and said, "Would you do the same thing in Vegas?" And I said, I can't do that. He gave me the date. I can't do that. I said, I have to be at home in college. And a certain date. So I called Missy over here. And said, basically said, you didn't say exactly this, but are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> so I went, we postponed it for a couple of weeks, and I went to Vegas. I did the speech. They paid me money there, and they bought me now, I'm not a great um, see on the end, 
and my nephew did the uh, stuff around uh, the Queen's Golden Jubilee and, and rights of disability and whatever else. That's it. Next slide, please. There's a bit of music to play, but not this one. There's no vocal in it. Play it anyway, see if you can get one of this. Thank you, Paul. 